시청자 여러분 안녕하십니까? TKC 초대석 시간입니다. 오늘 이 시간에는 린달리 20선거구 시의원 후보와 함께합니다. 코비드 안전수칙 관련 이원 스튜디오 인터뷰 방송으로 진행됩니다. 먼저 어, 시청자들을 위한 본인 소개 부탁드리겠습니다. 안녕하세요. 네, 안녕하세요. 네, 반갑습니다. <웃음> 네, 소개 um, 부탁드릴게요. 네. So, as many people know, I've lived in New York my entire life in different parts. Uh, I've been in Oakland Gardens for the last 11 years. And uh, I've been also working at KCS Korean Community Services uh, for about the same amount of time. Um, and I have a family of four, husband and two children. Um, the oldest is six, the youngest is two. Um, so it's been quite interesting being at home with them during COVID <laughs> and having to do remote learning. Um, But yeah, it's, it's been amazing um, just growing up in New York and, and just really seeing the diversity and being part of the Korean community. And so I've been very thankful to um, not only live in the community, but also help the community by working at KCS and providing services. 지금 방금 전에 후보님께서 말씀하셨듯이 사실 린다리 후보님은 오랫동안 KCS에서 활동을 많이 하셨기 때문에 한인 사회 참 이렇게 익숙한 얼굴로 알려져 있거든요. 근데 어떻게 23 선거구 그 시의원 후보로 나서시게 된 건지 동기가 궁금해요. 말씀해 주세요. KCS에서 많이 일하면서 I've noticed that there's a lot of disparities between the policies that are created at the city level and what actually is working in the community and how important it is to have that voice. Uh, for example, a lot of our community members in the Korean community are small business owners, right? But a lot of their needs are not often communicated effectively or known to the elected officials. And so I think it's really important for us to have a seat at the table and be that voice for the community, um, especially when it comes to a lot of legislation during COVID around schools, small businesses, senior center programs, we need more culturally competent services. Um, and I think a lot of the struggles that our community have, um, have just been exacerbated uh, by this uh, pandemic. And so really what, what did it was, that, you know, this is something I've been thinking about for a number of years, but what really pushed me to do it was COVID because it just, you know, the gap is so much more evident during COVID. And so I think it's more important for us to speak up for our community. 어, 린다리 후보님 말씀을 듣다 보니 그 후보님의 그동안의 그 활동들이 많이 도움이 될것 같다는 생각이 들거든요. 근데 사실 제가 알기로는 지금 시의원에 도전하신 분들이 굉장히 많아요. 유권자들도 살짝 혼동을 하실 수도 있을 것 같아요. 그 선거구마다 다 틀리기 때문에 지금 린다리 후보님께서 도전하신 23 선거구에 대해서 설명 좀 해주세요. Yeah. Um, so District 23 has some of the best schools in Queens. It is a very diverse neighborhood. So I, I believe uh, in District 23, about 42, 43% are actually Asian Americans. And of the 42, 43% Asian Americans, um, it's like a 60%, 40% split between South Asian and East Asian community members. And uh, transportation is an issue because there are no subways. It's very difficult to access Long Island Railroad. The buses are not the best um, in the area. So transportation is a huge issue. And also when you think about transportation, you know, it leads us to look at issues around the senior community. How are they getting their meals? How are they being served um, in a linguistically, culturally appropriate way? So it's, it's a very, you know, great place to want to live. That's why so many families come here because of the schools. Um, and also it has the most number of condos and co-ops in all of Queens. So I actually have been finding out that, you know, a lot of the people who come here, they may not be able to afford a home, but they can afford to purchase a co-op or condo. And it's a lot of working families. It's a lot of um, teachers, uh, people who are in the unions. That it's a very, very diverse uh, neighborhood and community. And so hopefully um, a lot of the policies that I want to try to help change in the community will benefit um, these community members. 예, 지금 후보님께서 이제 선거구 설명을 해주시면서 이제 하셔야 될 일들에 대해서 말씀을 해주셨지만 어, 좀 중요하게 시의원이 되고 나서 내가 꼭 이것만은 해야 되겠다 하는 그 메인 공약이 있다면 어떤 것이 있을까요? 
So as I mentioned before, I think because, for example, um, we have a lot of transportation issues, oftentimes I think City Hall and uh, the city forget about Eastern Queens. So oftentimes our district is very forgotten about. They rely on our tax dollars to help fund a lot of the programs within the city, but then whenever we need resources or programs for our communities, um, it's very slow to respond. So I think one of the top issues for me, as I mentioned, is we have a very diverse neighborhood, and it's very shocking to me that there's only, uh, there are no Asian senior centers in my district at all. So we have a large Asian community, but yet there's no senior centers that serve this community. There's no homebound meals programs. Um, I think honestly, a lot of the mosques, temples, faith-based community members, churches are the ones picking up the slack and serving the community, but we actually need to put city resources into the district, especially during COVID, and especially when a large part of our community are seniors that are the most vulnerable. So we have to make sure they receive the vaccines that they need. Um, also, I think a large part of our community are small business owners as well, um, especially along Union Turnpike and then also closer to the Long Island Expressway. There's a lot of immigrant owned businesses. And I think what's happened during COVID is that they're not getting the relief that they need. And also, um, I know some of my other candidates, uh, you know, colleagues who are running for council, like Richard Lee, have also mentioned the need for uh, revamping the ticketing and fining process of small businesses. Because what's happening is, is that they get a summons to appear in court, but oftentimes they don't have the funding, lawyer fees, or time to take off to actually go to court. So I think we need to change those policies so that the small business owners are not negatively impacted during COVID and have to pay more money. And there should be a way for them to fix these issues within a certain time period before they actually have to go to court. Um, and also, I think the education system, especially with remote learning, how do we improve that? How do we make sure that all of our schools have the resources that they need? Um, and that parents also have the resources they need. Because I know for me also as a working mom, it's very, very difficult to work full time and also uh, look over your kids to do remote learning. And so I think there need to be programs that the city has that help working parents uh, with daycare services or some kind of credits there. Um, and of course, the transportation system, we need to come up with more creative ways um, to make sure that people can get to work and also um, easily access the subways and the Long Island Railroad through efficient bus systems. Um, so those are all things I think that need to be improved. And um, of course, lastly, a big thing is healthcare access. Um, we at KCS are talking to the city and the governor's office about possibly becoming a vaccine site. But during COVID, whether it's information sharing, testing, all of that, I think language access is a really big problem in our community, especially the immigrant community. So if I have the, um, you know, if someone needs to sign up for unemployment insurance, the website is only in English. If people want to sign up for COVID vaccine, the website is only in English. So if they don't know how to speak English or if they don't know um, how to use a computer or a smartphone, it's very, very difficult for our community to access these services. So that's why at KCS and other immigrant serving nonprofits, they're helping. But I think the city also and the state needs to make sure that they're doing their part by making these services easily accessible. Um, so hopefully we can expand health and hospital services and um, healthcare related services because so many people have lost their health insurance during COVID because they've, they're out of work. So um, hopefully these are issues we can, we can fix in the next city council cycle. 그 린다리 후보님께서는 제가 알기로는 KCA에서 활동하시면서 그뭐 올해 여성상을 수상하실 정도로 굉장히 액티브하게 활동을 하신 걸로 제가 알고 있는데요. 혹시 그 평상시 활동을 하시면서 이렇게 영감을 주는 롤 모델이 혹시 있나요? Yes. Okay, so I know it may sound cheesy, but um, my grandmother, my 할머니, she's my role model. She passed away in 2007. 
But uh, I think she really, really influenced a large part of why I care so much about older adults and uri oshindul. When I mean, she raised me and my sister. My parents were working, so she raised me and my sister and lived with our family since I was born. And um, you know, towards she, I had a very close relationship with her. Um, and when I think about her life and the first gen community in the Korean community, they they had to struggle through war. They had to live through that whole um, Korean War. They had to uh, figure out how to provide for their family. And so when I think about how my grandmother came to the U.S., she actually worked for an American company and had to just learn rough English, like very basic English, um, and just provide for her family. So. When I think about that and how difficult that is, I, I don't think I would have the ability to do that in a different country. And um, you know, she and I always had a very close relationship. And towards the end of her life, I was the one, she had a home health aide, but I was the one that was helping to give her a bath, uh, clip her toenails, because she couldn't bend over to clip her toenails, and also change her adult diapers when she had to go to the bathroom and help her walk around. And, and I think being a caretaker and seeing that part, it really makes me feel so strongly like we need to give our seniors dignity towards the end of their life. And I think that's why I have such a heart for uh, older adults. And that's why I want to help serve them as much as I can. 사실 뭐 할머니라는 단어만으로도 가슴이 참 따뜻해지는 얘기인 것 같네요. 마지막으로 유권자들에게 왜 린달이어야 하는지 파이널 메시지 부탁드릴게요. I think we need to have more voices in the Korean community, especially when it comes to government and politics. I think we need to have a voice and a seat at the table. And I, I'm hoping that if I do become, let's just say, one of the first Hopefully there will be more of us, but one of the first Korean elected officials in New York City. Um, I'm hoping that that'll encourage younger generations to say, oh, actually, there's someone who looks like me in city politics. And so maybe this is something that I should think about getting involved in. And I, I really think it's to open the door for future generations to come in, right? Is that we have to give them the opportunity to think of this as a way to serve. Um, and also as a potential career path and not something that is just for non-Asian community members, right? I think it's very important to see someone that looks like you in these kind of positions, so. 오늘 좋은 말씀 너무 감사드리고요. 남은 5개월 동안 더 파이팅 하시고 좋은 yeah. 결과 기대해 보도록 하겠습니다. 감사합니다. 감사합니다. <laughs> 네, TKC 초대에서 오늘 이 시간에는 어, 린달이 23 선거구 시의원 후보님과 함께했습니다. 다음 이 시간에 다시 뵙겠습니다. 감사합니다.